Welcome, everyone. This is the MEMSPA Minutes video series for the week of August 30th to September 2nd. I am your host, Mike Domagowski, and I have the esteemed privilege to be the president of MEMSPA for the 2021 and 22 school year. Uh, of course, if you've seen this video series before, this is intended for not only just MEMSPA members, um, but also non-members, and we talk about educational leadership topics. So we invite you to subscribe to the MEMSPA YouTube channel, MEMSPA TV, and also check out these videos from week to week as they appear at 8.30 p.m. on Thursdays. They premiere at 8.30 on Thursdays, so you got to wait till then, but they are open on the channel for the rest of the time afterwards. I have with me today my esteemed guest. I'm so happy to see Cindy Malik, who is the Associate Executive Director of the Michigan Elementary and Middle School Principals Association. She is a superstar leader, so welcome, Cindy, to the video series, Memphis for Minutes. Thank you, Mike, and thank you for that introduction. Makes me feel all good and fluffy on a Friday. You, you are a fantastic leader and a fantastic person, and I've known you for several years now, so I'm excited to have you here for a couple minutes um, just to have a conversation, right, about what's happening in MEMSPA, but really in educational leadership as well. Like, what are we doing as leaders? So I'm excited to, to start those, the, you know, the conversation. So at first and foremost, can you just share with everybody who may be listening or watching this a little bit about yourself, what you've done, where you've come from, a little bit about yourself? Sure. And so I started uh, my teaching career, first of all, I'm a Chippewa. Fire you know. up chips. I am as Fire well. Up chips. And uh, I started in Owasso Public Schools in the late 80s. And from there, I went to South Redford Schools, where I um, was fortunate enough to just be around incredible mentors and leaders. And from there, I was at Wayne Risa. And uh, Wayne Risa, I worked in leadership development for 12 years. And again, surrounded by amazing people. And uh, I've held roles as a teacher, as principal, and an assistant superintendent. And um, I would say that the principal's position was always my favorite. So uh, I think anybody get, anybody get into um, the principal leadership role, um, greatest profession on earth. Oh, for sure. Uh, uh, well, about the assistant superintendent, I'm interested in that because we've had conversations about your roles in the past. What was the role with assistant superintendent? It was more curriculum is what I remember correctly. Correct or am I wrong? Uh, yep, curriculum, curriculum, state and federal programs, uh, all professional learning, homeless liaison. Uh, I don't know. I Hats off to all of those people because you wear 50 million hats at a time, just as you do as a principal. I was just going to um, say, I'm sure it was um, tons of hats. Yep. The difference is, is that your name is on a lot of things that you're signing for a lot of money. And I was always fearful that I had signed over, you know, the house and the cat and everything else. So yeah, uh, it's a, it's a huge responsibility. And, um, you know, you know, within our membership, we have a lot of uh, central office administration and uh, that our members and um, we support them as much as we do our elementary and middle school principals. So um I just, I've, I've walked in their shoes and I appreciate every moment of their day. So, awesome. and, I, and I don't, uh, right now with everything that's going on, I don't envy them. I just kudos and we lift them all because this is some, some challenging times. Yeah, it's a hard job. And for all those experiences that you've had, I know you've, you've really helped the principals within MEMSPA uh, a ton while you've been the associate executive director there. And can you talk a little bit about your role and what you're doing now? Because I know you've taken a lot of that experience that you had at Wayne Risa and being a principal and assistant superintendent, and you've brought that to the association, which has really exponentially helped the association grow. So we appreciate that. But talk about your role now and what you do with MEMSPA. Sure. So I think that the this is very similar to being an assistant superintendent and uh, in, in the ways that it's just on a broader scale. So we're border to border and coast to coast here in the state of Michigan. And uh, I think I've touched every edge of the lakes and uh, of our borders, uh, trying to meet our members uh, to understand, you know, what is it like up in Copper Country versus Southeast Michigan? And what are the needs and um, how are they different and how are they the same? And, you know, my role at MEMSPO originally was to get the new evaluation system launched. Uh, which we're now, I'm here, this is going on my fourth year, and, and uh, we've done that. So um, that was a big piece of my assignment when I got here, was creating the new teacher evaluation system. And now we're in pilot mode with that. But along the way, um, my role has uh, been to create professional development, not just for administrative leaders, but for their teacher leaders and their aspiring administrators. Yep. Uh, you know, we can't do this job alone as, as administrators. We have to use... Um, all the strengths around us. And so creating professional learning where we're all learning together 
in those groups as leaders and then bringing along our leaders and we're thinking about that shared leadership responsibilities um, and learning together so we've created all kinds of professional learning um, anywhere from uh, you know now virtual professional learning but also private retreats for schools um, you know i've done a lot of work where we're you know create retreat atmosphere kick off the school year um, bring together schools in february when we hit that lull um, and then finding a lot of really interesting people to present at our conferences and, um, and prevent, you know, present professional learning along the way. So uh, this role has been amazing. Um, you know, it's, I think for me, it's been about meeting our members and the, that the needs that they have. And they are different from border to border and coast to coast, but they're mm -hmm. also very similar. So um, the other thing I would say to, you know, growing membership has been huge. I think one of our fastest growing areas in our membership is the middle level and focusing on middle level. Uh, the last couple of years in creating middle level conference has been a lot of fun working with Carmen and her team and, and pulling uh, that together. So it, I would say that I've had a lot of creativity um, allowed to me and as I involve members, because this is also a shared leadership position and we're involving people, um, it's just been exciting. You know, I get to, you know, as much as the principal's position is like my favorite job in the world, this is probably pretty close to second. We <laughs> in this is because you get to be creative and, yeah. and help people grow from where they are. Yeah, it, it, I hope it's right up there with all the amazing leadership positions you've had. So, cause you are doing a great job and you know, um, it's kind of, you kind of answered some of the things that were on my mind about our conversation here um, already. You know, you talked about what MEMSPA does. I mean, the professional development and you're in charge of a lot of that, of, of organizing that, presenting it, getting out to the membership, getting out get out to uh, leaders across the state. Um, retreats, I've seen a couple of those. The social media posts on that have been awesome. Really just to see um, the evaluation piece. I'm very excited about that coming out. That was something that you've been working on for a while. And, um, you know, as part of the executive board, I, I kind of tapped into that a little bit. Uh, excited to see that and excited to see these pilot schools um, kind of try all that out. So I know that I see your face right there. You're very excited about that. So I'm very excited about I, that. You know, I'm involved as well. I, I really love the, the conferences, the collaboration that's involved, the connections you make at these conferences, whether it's the middle level conference, the annual conference that MEMSPA has, and yes, for those listening and learning, you got to go to the annual conference. You have five to 600 people, all leaders, all collaborating all at one time um, and in little groups too, based on their expertise or their needs. And it is the most amazing educational leadership experience. And Cindy is one of the leaders, if not the leader, setting that all up. So presentations and, and presenters as well. So thank you, Cindy, for doing that. And I will tell you that's interesting. Let me, let, you know, what's interesting about that conference is that also has had this evolution. Mm -hmm. When I was a principal and I came to it, it was all principals. And now we have teacher leaders Correct. all the way up to superintendents, Yeah, you know, in the mix of who's coming to that conference and who's presenting and sharing their stories. And so when you can involve all of that networking and all of that energy and in um, all of the topics, I mean, it's um, that conference is amazing. It's amazing to put together it's a giant puzzle, but to watch it go off and then to participate in, again, meeting the needs of the membership, it it is like the greatest high. Yeah, it is. It really is. And, and what's wild is you don't realize what that means or how it feels until you're there. And I remember the first time I was at the conference, um, Molly Funk came up to me and said uh, to me, she said, you know what, once you attend it one time, you're going to want to come back forever. And I have, I mean, it's been eight years now, just for me, I wish it's been 18 years, but I've come back ever since I already have my conference request in like it's done deal. So, um, but it's the best conference. You know, we also, you know, we haven't touched on too much about other things like, you know, what MEMSPA provides for people. You touched a lot of the great things that you do, like the PD and the retreats and the evaluation pieces and the conferences and, um, and things like that. The presenters that you've gotten have been amazing. Um, but there's also things like advocacy, legal representation. I had a good conversation with our executive director, Paul Liebenau, two weeks ago, and he mentioned those as well. So for those people that are listening and watching, it's, you know, MEMSPA is this collective group of supporting principles and however you need to be supported. And as we're having a conversation with Cindy right now, I mean, professional development is that huge umbrella, but it, there's so many things underneath it, right? But there's also advocacy, 
legal representation, which some principals, you know, have been given the shaft here and there. I'm going to be honest. And, and, you know, they're not treated rightly by whoever it might be. And MEMSPA supports those principles. Um, and we want to make sure that settlements are given or the right thing is done. So, um, so that's all done within the MEMSPA office. I will tell you that being on this side of that, I can't, I cannot even emphasize enough how important it is your membership in having representation. I think a lot of people are under the belief that their school board or their superintendent um, in central office, that they're covered right. legally. I think and what they, they find don't. out. Yeah. Yeah. And what they find out is, uh, no, that attorney's not there for them. And um, I would say you had mentioned, you know, some people are not treated right. Uh, and I would say the conversations that I've had personally uh, and professionally, um, that has probably been the biggest eye-opening thing for me coming into this role at MEMSPA. Um, there are a lot of people who, whether it's something they say, something that is perceived, mm -hmm. turns into something that we think might be small in the moment and gets really large. And Paul, you know, I get a phone call. If I can't handle it, I put it, you know, send it on to Paul. Um, but it is amazing how we think that something innocent can get blown up, especially in the presence of social media. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so having, having that phone call, and I will tell you, honestly, my first year as a principal, I, and at the time it, it was a different executive director, but I utilized uh, the benefits of my attorney. I had a, uh, I had somebody who thought they were being funny. And um, it got to a point where uh, I, another MEMSPA member uh, working that network, I shared what was happening and I'd only been a principal for like four weeks. And this is not stuff I learned in principal school. And uh, he said, you know what, you need to call the office. And I did. And the executive director and Anne Annette at that time mm -hmm. uh, sent a letter of cease and desist. And the person who was causing the problem came, why did you have to get an attorney? And I was like, because this, I don't have time for this crazy. Right. And it stopped right in that moment. Um, but I didn't know what to do. And I was losing sleep and, uh, and freaking out, thinking I was going to lose a job, uh, realizing that it was shenanigans on the other end. So, yeah. you know, something so simple can take away our sleep. Uh, knowing that Paul and Annette are on the other side uh, is huge. So um, that, that has been the biggest eye-opening piece for me coming to MEMSPA. You know, yeah. as a principal, I would say you have a bad day with a parent or a teacher or whatever. You go to kindergarten, you go down to kindergarten, everybody loves you, they hug you and you get the warm fuzzies. Um, but when you're on the other side of something that is costing you your sleep, it only takes a phone call to help you sleep again, knowing that you have that protection. So I would absolutely say, you know, to anybody, uh, make sure that you have coverage. Yeah, so a lot of reasons to be a member right there, right? And I, I appreciate you sharing your personal story. That's hard uh, to share, you know, those those hard and trial times that we have as administrators and leaders and, and even of our personal lives too. But those things are hard to share, but they're real. And oftentimes we don't really realize they're coming until they're coming. And then when they happen, we wish we would have, right? So that's why it's important. Right, because it member. happens to everybody else. It could, ha it could happen to mm -hmm. anybody at yeah. any time. And that's why it's important to be a member, not just for the the good things that happen on a consistent basis that we're looking forward to, like the conferences and the PDs and things like that, and the collaboration and, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, but but the the legal representation as well, you never know. So so I thank you for that. If you had, let me let me switch gears just for a couple minutes, for a minute here, and we're almost done. But give me one or two things that are the big hitter items that you'll be working on in the next year that our members would be like, wow, that's really cool. That's I didn't know that MEMSPA did that. Or give me one or two things that's really coming out of MEMSPA in the next year? Well, I have to go with the teacher evaluation project. <laughs> so, I kind of figured, but. Yeah, <laughs> this has been, um, this has been a four year journey for me. And um, you know what, we've been working really hard at getting teaching and learning back into teaching and learning. Yeah. And we have created a model and it's, and it's a giant we. There's a group of people that have had their uh, fingers in this and in, in cooperation with the Department of Education and, um, having advocates on that side, but really taking a look at what does teaching and look, learning look like, sound like, and feel like right now, and what should it look like, sound like, and feel like, and then we're, we're getting back to that, and it's really about conversation and dialogue and taking teachers from where they are 
and uh, pushing them forward in a way that they're choosing their growth. And um, it's really getting into the conversation. You know, when I was a principal, I used to write a novel for every teacher. I spent every Sunday in my office. I would be lucky to get two done in a day. I don't think I saw a garden from the time, you know, March hit until the yeah. end of June, because that's all I did was evaluation. We've created, we've got a partnership and we have a platform that is going to be very um, teacher and principal friendly. Uh, it's not novels, it's growth. We're going to be on frequent feedback cycles so that we might get, you know, if we're getting feedback eight times a year at 20 minutes at a crack, that's literally eight years worth of feedback. Yeah. Um, and it has limits. So it's going to keep people out of their offices. It's going to keep them on a timeline, um, a productive timeline, and it's going to help teachers grow in their profession. And I am so excited uh, with our pilot schools and the training that we have kicking off this year. And, um, and we still have room. We have a partnership with the Department of Education. Uh, we have been giving some funds uh, to do the pilot. And um, we're, we're, we still have room for a couple of more schools. If anybody's interested, they can contact me at MEMSPA. Awesome. And I really, that that's really the biggest thing is that if anyone's looking to be involved, even if this evaluation, even if they were talking about the evaluation, the yeah. biggest thing is just reach out. I mean, uh, in, from my personal perspective, I just reached out in 2014 to Paul and saying, Hey, is there like a Twitter chat for elementary? You know, cause I was on the secondary one, which was great. And I'm like, this is great, but it's not answering my elementary stuff when I was an elementary principal at the time. Well, shoot, three, three or four weeks later, we had MEMSPA chat, right? So it was just like, here we go. Um, so if anyone wants to be involved or understand trainings or PDs or anything that MEMSPA provides or the evaluation system, if you're interested in learning, even learning more, just contact MEMSPA yeah. office, uh, MEMSPA.org. It's as simple as that. The phone number's on there. Emails are on there. There's a staff page. Um, just yep. go to MEMSPA.org and you can check it out. Yeah. You know, Mike, I want to share an another project that we have had going and Donnie seen a more, uh, got this really kicked off and I've been able to carry her torch, but, you know, we have a MEMSPA mentoring and many, uh, many of our administrators have been able to take advantage of that. Uh, but we have mentors who have been trained. They've been trained in cognitive coaching. They've all had the role of principal and or, and or central office. We even have, um, superintendent mentors, um, but sometimes just having somebody to reach out to, to have a conversation with, um, there is a charge for it. Um, MEMSPA doesn't make any money. We pass that out along to our mentors. But I think the thing is about that is, is that when you have somebody that you can call 24 seven and have somebody who can visit your school uh, to do a walkthrough or meet you for dinner, but they're that guide on the side, that confidant, when you wanna ask a question and you're not really like, you don't wanna bother the superintendent's office one more time, you know, they'll direct you. They'll say, you know, you need to check out board policy or we need to do, you know, or maybe it's, um, you need to call the superintendent on that one. But nine out of 10, your mentor can help you without you having to bother anybody else in your, in the office. Cause you know, you want to be seen as that confident leader and that competent leader. And we even have mentors and myself, you know, where I've worked with principals who have been principals for 18 years. And they're like, hey, I want to have you come in and be my mentor. For this year because I just need new eyes. I need mm -hmm. new eyes on things. Uh, yesterday, I reviewed a letter going home, a welcome back letter for somebody who I mentored five years ago and said, will you just put another set of eyes on this? And I'm glad that he did because he forgot to change the date. It was a great oh. copy and paste job, but you know, you look at something so many times. Yeah. So we have a strong network of mentors, again, from border to border and coast to coast. And if anybody's interested in having a guide on the side, a MEMSPA mentor to help them through either their first, you know, three to five years, or just another set of eyes for down the, you know, for those who are down the road in their career, um, you know, they can reach out to me and I can get them more information on that too, because that is another piece that's so important, uh, growing ourselves as leaders in what can be a very lonely position. So uh, know that those MEMSPA mentors are ready, willing, and able. Awesome. Great information. Um, and, and thank you for all the time today. It's been great. This is great information about how to not only just get involved with MEMSPA, but really what you know you do as a leader within the association, what you've done over the course of your career. And it really, it, it's, it's amazing to hear 
But for those of you that are listening or watching that have not met Cindy, um, reach out to MEMSPA. I mean, there's so many things that she can help you with and also the association can as well. Uh, Cindy, before we, we go in about 30 seconds a minute, is there anything else that you'd like to share with anyone listening or watching? No, Mike, I'm just excited for your leadership this year and thank you for all that you do for MEMSPA. And we have many things and available and Taryn's done an amazing job on the website. So, you know, check it out. And if there's anything that you need that you want added to that or that you're looking for, reach out to us. We can help you make things happen. And if we can't, we, we have resources that we can connect you to. We're here to help. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Cindy. Um, thank you for your time today. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Once again, this premieres uh, the Memso Minutes video series here premieres every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Once again, don't forget to subscribe to that YouTube channel at MEMSPA TV. I'm here for you. Cindy's here for you. MEMSPA's here for you. Even if you're not a member, reach out to us. You know, we are all better together. I say that at the end of the video series. I'm going to say it right now. Uh, we're all better together. You're not on an island, which is what Cindy just said. You stole my gusto of my last sentence here. So, <laughs> uh, But no, I appreciate it. I appreciate you, Cindy. I appreciate everyone um, checking it out. We're all amazing leaders. Um, we all got some ups and downs over the next year or so, but we're going to get through them because we're better together. So we're principles leading learning. And, uh, on that, I bid you adieu and, uh, we'll see you next week, but thank you again, Cindy. And thank you to everyone checking this video series out. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Very welcome. See you everybody.